I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what to say about this team right now. It's, it's confusing. It's a lot like last year where after a few of the performances we had, I, I counted us out. And right now I'm going to go ahead and, you know, pretty much count us out. I, I mean, I've been wrong before. Like last year after we lost the UCLA game and a couple of those other bad losses we had, I thought, you know, it, it wasn't, you know, we were not going to end the season respectfully, but I, I don't know. This was frustrating for a myriad of reasons. Um, start things off, you know, in the first half, we moved the ball, we got it into opposing territory, and then right as we started to step into field goal range, we, it, it just stopped working. We couldn't move the ball, we settled, settled for some long field goals, we tried to go forward on fourth down, we had the fake field goal, which, you know, obviously was not intended to pick up the first down, but... You know, I, I don't really have a problem with that. Um, you had air field goal. You had the uh, dropped fourth down conversion attempt. And I don't know. And then in the second half, you know, we had a do or die drive with like seven minutes left. And we moved backwards two yards before we turned the ball over on downs. We. I. This offense should be humming. I mean, look look at the other sideline, Arizona State. They they hum. There's a p receiver open on pretty much every play. They always look like they know what they're doing. They almost always get what they want. They never have, <clears throat> you know, these busted plays where it just looks like, you know, it's a disaster. Whenever they need a third down conversion, they run a play that gives them a good chance to do it. It just seems like we... I, I don't know. This, there's no reason that this offense should not be humming with, you know, Locker, a, you know, who's been starting for several years with these position players who have been playing with this team for some time. They should know this offense. Um, we should not have these, you know, disaster plays on third and 15 where we run a telegraphed screen that picks up two yards because a lineman caught our running back. We should not be running plays where we it's third and three and we're running a one yard out to our fullback. You know, just plays that set us up for failure. It shouldn't be happening. It's driving me crazy. Ah, uh, you know, there's no reason why this offense should look so lost sometimes, and that's really what got me about this game. Sometimes we moved the ball and got into scoring range, and it shut down. Christ. Um, other times, it, it it wasn't working at all. And I, I don't know. I mean, with the people we have on this offense, all things considered, for us to go out there like that, it, it's embarrassing. It, it really is. And, you know, at some points, yeah, we move the ball, but you got to finish, and we didn't finish tonight. Didn't finish any of those drives. And, you know, the last one, the game was already kind of over, but, you know, still, he didn't throw the pick intentionally because he knew the game was over. I mean, he was trying to score, and he couldn't. And, you know, Locker played real well tonight for the most part, um, so I'm not going to hold anything against him. The pick was bad, but, you know, I'm not going to hold the game against him. Um, so, yeah, I'm just frustrated with this offense. We're wasting a year of Jake Locker. We're wasting, um, this is the last year of Jake Locker in college because, um, you know, Oh, well, but he, I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, last week was great. Last week, we would have scored 40 points if our receivers could catch the ball. And, you know, receivers dropping the ball, yeah, it pisses you off, but at least then you know your offense is working. Our, our offense tonight was not putting our receivers in position to drop passes. 
and you know they dropped a couple but it wasn't as if we were put in positions to succeed and then failed we were put in these positions to fail and and that's what pisses me off so the ASU defense did play well especially late in the game they got a ton of pressure our offensive line which is normally pretty good could not do anything in in the second half so ASU's defense did play a part in that especially later in the game where where you know like I said they got pressure they got good play from their defensive backs they um I don't know I I don't even know where to go with this uh defensively it's more the same I know this secondary is not very good and as upset as mad as I get at this defense and this secondary I I got to let it go I got to understand that this team defensively is not shutting people down it it's it sucks, but I got to deal with it. Um, ASU's offense played pretty pretty well. Their uh, quarterback, uh, Sneed, 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 I can't remember his name, but you know he's a little shaky. But you know he played pretty well out there. He had a couple of bad throws. You know the pick was really bad. Um, wide open wide receiver that he just overthrew. But, um, you know, he had a lot of good throws, too. So, congrats, ASU. You beat us. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't like, you know, we beat ourselves or anything. Because ASU did make quite a few plays out there. I'm not saying that. I'm not I'm not really saying we beat ourselves. I don't really like to say that kind of stuff. Because um, I'm, I'm just frustrated with the um, way our offense just doesn't look prepared on some place that should never happen with the players we have it, it just shouldn't happen ever and like I said if you look across the field at ASU a team that doesn't have that Heisman candidate quarterback like ours although you know obviously Locker's not winning the Heisman this year um, you know they, they hum they 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 get what they want on almost every play. They don't always execute, but they're getting what they need. So yeah, 24 to 14. Um, right now, I think this team. I'm kind of counting this team out of bowl contention, all things considered. But you know, last year I thought we were going to win. Like, you know, there was a point late in that season where I thought we were going to roll over, and we didn't. We ended the season pretty well. We, um, you know, ended by. I think blowing out California, so we're not out. Uh, real quick, because I don't end this on a bad note, because we don't play tomorrow, so I'm not. That tomorrow is not really going to pick my spirits up with a win or anything like that. So um, I am happy about one thing that happened this week. A couple things actually. Uh, Seattle, the Seahawks have traded for Marshawn Lynch, a fourth round pick. I like it. You know, I'm not going to miss the fourth round pick. Even if he ends up being a decent player, and, you know, I'm, I'm saying, you know, he might, could be, there might be someone available there and all that, but um, teams overvalue draft picks sometimes because it's a crapshoot, especially in that fourth round. I think, you know, when you look at, like, Randy Moss for a third rounder and Marshawn Lynch for a fourth rounder, I have no problem giving those picks up. So, uh, I like Lynch. He's a good player. You know, I, I watched some of his highlights on YouTube. He's proven that in Buffalo he was a good player at times. Um, sometimes, you know, he wasn't very good, but you don't know how much you can put on him because Buffalo's situation is horrible. But he did have good seasons. He had a lot of good games. I'm excited. I cannot wait to see him get out there for us. And um, if we... We're going to find out what the problem is. Is it our, is it Can we not run the ball because of our running backs, or is it because of our offensive line? So hopefully Lynch will add some consistency to our running game that we really need because, you know, we're, we can't, you know, do roll like Texas Tech or some crap like that. It, it, it's not going to work. So maybe he'll bring some balance to this offense. I'm, you know, even if he's only on this team for the rest of this year, and even if he doesn't play that well, we didn't lose much in that trade. So I'm all for it. I'm I'm excited. I am all for that trade. I'm happy to um, be on the positive end of a lopsided trade. And um, I can't wait to see him suit up for us. Even if he doesn't do anything for us, 
um, you know, fourth round pick is a pick I'm not really going to miss. Uh, uh, and the other big trade of the week I want to comment on real quick, uh, Randy Moss to the Vikings. I'm happy about that one, too, because this is going to be fun. You're talking about an offense with Randy Moss, Sidney Rice, Percy Harvin, Brett Favre, Adrian Peterson, Vishanti Shianko, Shanko, Vishanti Shianko, whatever. Um, even Bernard Berrien, you know, I, Bernard Berrien sucks, but he's fast. So... That is sick. That is going to be fun to watch. I cannot wait to watch that offense in practice. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a couple weeks for them to get it together in all likelihood, but I cannot wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, Randy's time in New England was just coming to an end. It just wasn't, it wasn't working. It, it, it was time to break it up. And um, Randy Moss is just the kind of player you need to break up with every now and then, and here we are. So, you know, I think New England did make the right move, and as for them only getting a third rounder, you know, that does seem like low value, but the other side of that is they needed to get rid of him badly, apparently. So, I am, I am really excited to see this Minnesota Vikings offense. So, yeah, um... I'm happy about that stuff. That's going to be fun to watch over the coming weeks, I think. Lynch on Seattle and um, Randy on Minnesota. But um, as for that mess, um, I don't know. I'm getting a little fed up with this offense, and um, I think we should be better than that. So, anyway, I am out of here. See you guys later.